So I'm so excited today to have Mark Pace from Rep5 Pro, really innovators in ultra low latency video streaming and interactivity with watch parties. And it's gonna be a really interesting conversation about where digital media is going and can't wait to get started. Let's go. I really wanted to talk a little about where Red5 Pro kind of fits in the, really in the spectrum uh, of video streaming and ultra low latency I know is, is, a, is a big piece of it. Everybody's been trying to get to a lower latency so they can get a better live experience and add interactive experiences to things. So some success has been had with the HTTP protocols, but dropping them down to two seconds or one second of latency. But where we really think the low latency market is, is sub 500 milliseconds. And that's really where we kind of coin the term at the speed of thought. We want you to be able to interact with other people without noticing that delay. So that's really the focus of our product is you know, fast enough to not be noticeable to you or me as a human. You're capturing, you've got that initial video capture. It's then hitting. It's yeah, then so hitting it's going to um, hit a node. Um, this will be an origin node. So uh, publishing uh, streams go into origin nodes. Those origin nodes are uh, cattle in our, our parlance, or just they're throwaway. We'll, we'll bring them up, we'll bring them down. The kind of brains of the operation is the stream manager, and that'll operate behind a load balancer. It's in charge of uh, bringing up nodes that are needed, so it'll bring up extra edges, as so if we have lots of publishers. It can do things like assigning relays so that we're only relaying one piece of traffic through uh, to another location rather than the edge and origin mesh that is usually created when they talk to each other. And we also have nodes like mixer nodes, which can create composite images of multiple streams and then stream that back out as a single stream. That can be really useful for compositing an image for sending to something like Twitch, where you want to like have a picture of you and the game that you're playing sent to Twitch. And then we have transcoder nodes, which can you know, transcode into multiple bit rates, usually used for some kind of adaptive ladder. The stream manager itself, it's directing resources. That's one thing it's doing. Is it doing health management of those? Uh, it's doing health management. So it does uh, health checks on the nodes. If it finds a bad node, it'll schedule a new node to replace it. It um, also handles all the incoming connections. So it's kind of a broker to connect you to a, a different type of node. So if you want to say publish, you, what you do is you talk to the stream manager, you say, I want to publish. It says, okay, I've got an available edge for you or edge origin for you to publish to. It assigns that IP address to you, keeps track of that connection. So then it knows, okay, I've got this many connections on this node. I can only handle that many, so I should balance them between these other nodes, or perhaps I should bring up a new node. So it's in charge of doing that. But then one of the really cool things about it is that after it's established that connection, it gets out of the way. Your video is no longer going through some load balancer, through another server, to an edge. It goes straight to that edge or straight to that origin. Now, in your deployment on Oracle Cloud, your user, are you using Oracle's load balancers for managing the, the traffic to your stream managers? Yeah, so we use the Oracle load balancers in front of the stream managers, and then we use Oracle Auto Scaling to bring the stream managers up and down based on the traffic that's hitting them. But then, like I said, you know, it's the stream managers after that who use Terraform to really you know, bring up the, the cluster that does all the work. Okay. So this is the stream manager managing this Terraform yeah, yeah. agent? The stream manager uh, speaks to Terraform. It'll say, you know, hey, I need a new node group, or I need this uh, server replaced, or I need a new, new one of these edges, or a new node origin. You know, it knows what it needs, tells that to Terraform. That's how we make our lives relatively easier to support multiple clouds. I mean, Terraform is not a compiled language. Right, mm -hmm. so it's interpreted. How are you managing the resources of the time? Are, are you looking ahead to kind of, hey, I'm going to need a new server? So kind of, what, what are those? Yeah, so we have a couple points? options there. Um, one, you can use our event scheduling system. If you know an event's going to come up at a certain time, it's going to have this many people. You can scale your cluster up before it, and then scale it down after it, and you can just set the schedule on that, and it'll just do that automatically on time. Otherwise, you have uh, metrics you can set. You know, number of connections I want to scale up. I want to scale up on a certain CPU level. And you know you can also decide how how many you scale up. So like when you hit a certain node, do I just bring one new node up, or do I bring ten new nodes up? So okay. it's definitely a you, you have to learn about your traffic and you have to play with that you know the scaling policies to you know get it perfect. But you've got a lot of ability to you know adjust it. Now when I start going multi-region, same basic architecture. You're now using global load balancers. Kind of what starts. Yeah. To so you'd there. want to look at global load balancing for the stream managers, and then deploying node groups uh, strategically where you're users are. So maybe a, a node group in uh, US West, a node group in US East, a node group in Central Europe, that kind of a scenario. And then what happens is the front end application, which is the watch party, it knows where you are, tells the stream manager, hey, this guy is in California, 
send him and the stream manager says, great guys in California, I'm going to send him to the West Coast cluster. So tell me a little bit, so MySQL database, the it's, is it querying? So it's not caching anything in memory or cache. It's not MySQL is its store. So you're doing calls in and, in and out of it today. Yeah, and so we'll beef up those MySQL instances, run them on SSDs. You know, sometimes we go crazy and run them on RAM disks. That's the state engine right now. That is being replaced with Kafka and Kafka screens and KSQL. So next version, I think 11 is the one that comes out with that, which is really, you know, going to make it, you know, much more scalable. Today, it's it's mostly compute and storage that you're using on, on an OCI. Are there any other kind of key services? You're, it sounds like you're using load balancers. You're using DNS, your network gateways, so your security gateways, bastion hosts. We've set up on both public and private, your AWD zones. Are you using a AMD primarily? Yeah. AMD um, e flexible, so fle flexibility on, on, on CPU and memory, is was that something that was helpful to you? It's nice to be able to grow the shapes, and the E4 uh, flex processors have been great as far as we always know what to expect out of them. And, uh, you know, in other cloud providers, we've had interesting times with different performance on, you know, different droplets or different instances based off of the fact that they have a different CPU type. Another thing that we were talking about were, um, were startup, startup times. You want to use that event schedule anyway to try to, you know, bring your, your cluster up to a decent side before people start joining. Right. But if you have to wait three or four minutes for a node to come up, then you have to bring up three or four at a time because there's you, there's no other way to. Well, you're trying to get ahead, keep ahead yeah, of exactly. So you often bring up way more nodes than you need, or sometimes you just never get them up fast enough. And so launching on Oracle has been consistent for us, and actually took our um, our standard load test where we do like a hundred thousand plus uh, subscribers. And that used to take eight to 10 hours. And that was, a lot of that was just bringing up the nodes because we have to bring up so many nodes to be able to you know, do that. You know, just the users need hundreds of computers that are really large. And so that eight hour test went down to two. So within you know, Oracle, we've got a region which has an availability domain and an availability domain, of course, has fault domains. Do you try to keep within one availability domain? Do you, do you distribute across multiple availability domains within a region? Are you keeping that all within one AD? Or? No, what we're, we're doing is uh, trying to distribute um, across multiple ADs. Mm -hmm. um, so we're like stream, a stream manager cluster, maybe one or two in each AD, um, never just a single one. Um, and then um, obviously nodes, then um, a set of nodes in a fault domain, a set of nodes in another fault domain, and a set of nodes in another fault domain. So we're really kind of fault tolerant within the AD, and then that same setup across multiple ADs. And then as you imagine, you take that and do that in multiple regions. Mark, thank you so much for the, for, for the time today. It's been, been good to talk. You and I chat every once in a while. I don't think we get to talk, talk enough, but today it's been great to go through things at a, at a pretty deep level. I really appreciate it.